We are now joined by John Sarno, President, Employers Association of New Jersey, and Christine Stearns, Vice President, Health and Legal Affairs at the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. We're here to talk about uh, small business and Obamacare. Uh, John, let me ask you, um, as we do this program uh, in November of 2013, I'll air a little bit after, a lot of questions, but the one thing that is not a question is that there is a clear, direct impact on this new federal law and small business. The biggest impact is? Uh, biggest impact is that a small business can no longer buy a bare bones mini med plan uh, if they're going to stay in the game and provide health care to their employees. They're going to have to buy up if in fact they had one of those mini med plans and they're going to have to meet the federal standards in terms of quality and price and minimum value. But John, the, uh, small businesses, I just want to, small businesses with less than 50 full time employees, the number, right, Raph? they don't have to buy them even after the employer mandate comes into effect, correct? Well, no one has to provide insurance to employees, so there's no legal requirement to provide insurance. Um, if you have 50 or more employees, there may be a penalty if you don't provide insurance to full-time employees that meets this minimum value. But yes, absolutely for a smaller group, uh, no penalties uh, for not offering insurance, but if you're going to offer insurance, you're still going to have to meet the minimum value yes. plan. Christine, from a relationship perspective, how do you see the relationship changing between employer and employee with respect to what John's talking about? Well, and their health plans. Employers still want to provide coverage to their employees. You know, employees have always wanted, um, you know, good quality health insurance from their employers. Um, it's the benefit after wages that employees are most interested in. So I don't see that changing in the short run. Um, but affordability is still the real issue for employers. And the ACA isn't doing anything to make health insurance more affordable for employers. In fact, it's driving up costs. But I, I, thought, I thought that uh, the Affordable Care Act, the ACA, would give tax credits for businesses right. if they bought up to 50% of the cost of the premium. Isn't that quite an incentive? It's very narrowly drawn and doesn't really help a lot of employers here in New Jersey. Um, 25 or fewer employees and you have to pay average wages of um, $50,000 or less and that doesn't fit a lot of companies here. So, so what I'm hearing from you is, from both of you, is that not only is there not an incentive now with the Affordable Care Act for employers who didn't pay insurance to do so, but there's a disincentive for them to do so? Well, I wouldn't say a, a disincentive because, uh, again, a, a small group now can choose not to offer insurance, and roughly about half of New Jersey's small businesses do not provide insurance, and they'll probably continue not to provide well, insurance. Well, but the goal was, part of the goal was to, mm -hmm. to get more people insured, and part of the goal was to get small businesses to be able to start paying insurance for their workers. Um, I don't know if uh, the goal was to incent uh, small businesses to offer more insurance. I think, again, as Christine has said, uh, there's a small segment um, with, uh, you know, 25 or, or less employees, depending on how, many, how much wages that you pay. There could be some tax incentives, but by and large, the small group is left relatively untouched. What are you seeing in your members, the smaller businesses, at the... Business Industry Association, Christine, are they saying right now, we're going to wait, we're going to see how things fall out because there's a lot of misinformation and confusion, or are they saying, I'm jumping in and I'm going to take the lead? I think for um, employers that provide coverage, I think they want to continue to do what they're doing now, which is provide coverage, um, but they're frustrated. Um, Bye. You know, their plans have all been withdrawn, so they can't keep doing what they're doing. They have to go out and shop for a new plan. Because the Affordable Care Act has said that you, if your plan does not meet certain requirements of Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, you cannot offer this legally. Yeah, more or less. That um, So all the, the plans that don't meet the ACA requirements have been withdrawn, and come January 1st, the new plans that will be offered on the market will be ACA but if these compliant. Employers, but if these employers re-signed re to, to continue their insurance before January 1st, could they do that, even if it's their old policy? Yeah, they, they could. They yeah. could. they don't make significant changes, I think, uh -huh. on the plan. Uh -huh. As defined by who? Well, the federal no, government? Uh, yeah. yeah, by the act. By the act. But, you know, we, we've had a lot of people here that are critics of the ACA, and we've seen them on television, and one of the things that, that you always hear is that the Affordable Care Act is going to disincentivize small businesses of less than 50 
to hire more people because once they hire more than 50, they'll be they'll have to pay insurance for their workers. Mm -hmm. Is that is that accurate? You buy that, John? Um, it's it's um, there are people thinking about it. Uh, I don't think um, there's any major decisions being made now. One because the penalty phase has been pushed back another mm -hmm. year. Penalty meaning you will not be penalized the X number of thousands of dollars if you do not come on board. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's been pushed back. There's and 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 there's nothing really to jump into just yet. You mean because they don't have it together? They, they don't, don't, have, they, they don't so, have it together. So, so right now, you don't see it. You haven't well. seen it yet. You have, yeah, you haven't seen it. For example, that lowering hours of workers or reducing the number of workers or not hiring more workers. Employers that might be subject to the penalty are certainly preparing, and it is a major concern for those. Preparing what to pay the penalty? Well, preparing to ensure that their plans are compliant. Um, okay. You know, it, it is not an easy thing to ensure that a company is in compliance, even if it is a, a mm -hmm. company that offers generous um, um, benefits to their employees, ensuring that um, it is affordable for all the employees. You know, it is a complex um, requirement that um, doesn't just require that you offer benefits to your employees, that has to be affordable for all of them. There are, you know, the robust um, offering that has to be made. Um, we don't have all the details on that. So it's not a simple thing to ensure that you're in compliance. In the time we have left, for consumers out there, it's been incredibly challenging to get accurate, unbiased, uh, relevant information. For small businesses out there, how hard has it been to get accurate, unbiased, relevant information about this law? Uh, I, I think uh, I think there's a lot of valuable, accurate information available. I think um, on the healthcare.gov yeah, website. Um, well, I think there's there's there, is, there, there are curious, expert, I mean, there are uh, experts. I know Christine has been meeting with employers. I've been meeting with employers all over the state, trying to be as accurate as possible. Um, I think uh, has the federal the, government done an adequate job, in your opinion, in helping small business navigate this complex situation with this new law? Uh, well, the navigators is a whole other issue. No, and, no, I didn't, uh, I didn't mean but, to use, uh, no, to navigate overall, to help small business, John, I think navigate if a small the situation. Business, I think if a small business uh, needs information, it's pretty accessible. You believe to, that? Yeah. You agree? Media has done an excellent job of helping to educate employers. So we're terrific. Um, that <laughs> in media, particularly public no, television, trade, have we been accepted? Public accept television in particular. Um, really as good. well as, um, I think, trade associations and other organizations have been out there so helping employers. Um, but it, small employers report being very confused okay. mm. um, about the law. Uh, possible, possible issues, employers that rely on their brokers. Uh, that's it. also a Final gatekeeper point. of information. Thank you. Okay. So what we all agree on is public television is the best. That's it for this edition of Capital Report. For my colleague, Raphael Piormano, uh, the star of public television, I'm Steve Adubato. See you next week. <laughs>